When you hear about the tech company Apple, it's possible that three words come to mind. Innovative, trendy, and successful. But it hasn't always been this rosy. In the mid-90s, Apple was almost shut down. Today, it's worth $2 trillion, which makes it the most valuable company in the world. Perhaps the most innovative Apple product ever made isn't something you can carry home with you. In 2017, the company opened its new headquarters, the Apple Park. It's huge, looks like a spaceship, and is one of the most expensive buildings in the world. Before we explore the Apple Park, make sure to like this video and subscribe to Top Luxury. Let us know in the comments below what you think about Apple's new headquarters. Apple has always had its offices in Cupertino, California. Before the Apple Park, the headquarters were at the One Infinite Loop campus, which opened in 1993 and had the capacity for 5,000 employees. It allowed literally every person to have their own office. At the time it was built, the late CEO and co-founder Steve Jobs had been fired from Apple. He was rehired in 1996. Although he never really liked the headquarters, it became the place where many of his innovations came to life. Over time, Steve Jobs saw the rapid growth of the company. He knew that the one infinite loop wouldn't last. The workforce had grown considerably over a decade, and he started developing a vision for a new, bigger campus. It would combine his love for the environment and passion for great design. This vision would result in Apple's new 175-acre corporate campus, which is approximately the size of 100 soccer fields. The 2.8 million square foot main building is considered to be one of the most energy efficient buildings on Earth. The campus opened in 2017 and houses over 12,000 employees. However, its spaceship look wasn't its original design. In the initial design, the main building had the curious shape of a bloated clover leaf. With time, Steve Jobs realized that it wouldn't work. By June 2010, the design changed to that of a circle. Architects soon discovered that Steve Jobs had a very detailed vision of the glass, steel, stone, and trees that would be used to build Apple's new home. For example, he knew exactly the type of lumber to be used, right down to the specific time of year it should be cut. As the size of the project became clear, land was needed for the huge building. Vacant land in Cupertino is rare. However, they managed to purchase the initial 75 acres barely a mile from the infinite loop. Later, Steve Jobs learned that a 100-acre plot might be available. Luckily, it was just neighboring to the planned site, so they bought it. That's how Apple's project suddenly grew to 175 acres. In June 2011, Steve Jobs himself presented the ambitious plan to the Cupertino City Council. He confidently told them that he wanted to build one of the largest office buildings in the world. Sadly, he died a few months after that meeting. It was one of his last public appearances. Despite this great loss, Apple was determined to bring his vision to life. In 2013, the council unanimously approved Apple's plans for the new campus. They began tearing down the structures on the site and broke ground in 2014. The project took a little over three years to get finalized, and eventually, the campus opened for Apple employees in early 2017, despite ongoing construction work. It was completed at a substantial cost. In 2011, the budget for Apple Park was less than $3 billion. By the time construction was completed, it had grown to an estimated $5 billion. This makes it one of the most expensive buildings in the world. To put that in context, the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, cost $1.5 billion to build. However, with an annual revenue of $260 billion, what seems expensive to us could be just a drop in the ocean for Apple. Shaped like a large spaceship, Apple's main campus building is called The Ring. It houses 12,000 employees. It also features 800 tall curved glass panels that connect all the way around. It has four floors above the ground and three floors underground. Since it's a ring, it has no main entrance. Instead, it has nine entrances. True to Steve Jobs' style, it's hard to find a visible broken seam or paintbrush stroke on the structure. This gives a clean, neat finish to the building. Every aspect of the building was custom-made, down to the sinks and the taps. 
An overhead look at the campus might make you wonder where the roads and parking spaces are located. They situated most of these underground to maximize the green spaces above ground. The building has two levels of underground parking as well as two standalone parking structures. The underground parking system is so well planned, the parking areas have traffic lights and even street names. This parking solution allowed the green spaces to flourish. Steve Jobs wanted the place to feel like a natural haven. Because of this, 80% of the site is made up of green spaces with close to 9,000 trees and plants. The 30-acre center courtyard also has an artificial pond as well as long walking and running paths. Once you enter the building, you'll notice its 45-foot-tall curved walls of safety glass. This means it gets a lot of natural light and is quite a bright working space during the day. However, the walls are not made of regular glass pieces. They're curved and are some of the largest and strongest pieces of glass in the world. The contractor had to build a new machine to even make this special type of glass. The engineers also realized that the building needed to have shades because of California's climate. The solution was to produce glass fins that protrude from the ring at every floor. They slope at a slight downward angle to regulate light and glare. They also prevent rain from streaking down the miles of glass wall. Now, California is known to be prone to earthquakes. This is not good news for a glass building, right? To withstand this, the ring is mounted on huge steel base isolators. These ensure the building can move up to four and a half feet in any direction without losing its vital services. The system also consists of almost 700 large steel saucers that are located two floors underground. Another interesting thing about the ring is that it's a breathing building. This means it uses natural ventilation and needs no heating or cooling for nine months in a year. To achieve this, the engineering team consulted experts who optimized the airflow in Formula One race cars. They came up with an impressive system. The ring inhales air through the underside of the canopies. Elsewhere, shafts act like chimneys to exhale warm air back outside, keeping the building at ideal temperatures. As you can already tell, the design is determined by its function. This is a workplace where people are meant to be open to each other and open to nature. So the interior of the ring has large rooms with glass walls and entryways. These wide open spaces can be collapsed into smaller sections when needed. Even with this flexibility of space, Apple knows its employees need to unwind while at work. So the building has a 100,000 square foot fitness and wellness center, complete with a two-story yoga room. It also has laundry facilities and a physical therapy space for employees. If you happen to fall ill, there are medical and dental services to give you the treatment you need. For refreshments, the building has one large cafe. It's massive atrium-like space that takes up four floors of the building. It can hold 4,000 people at once in its vast ground floor and balcony dining areas. Along its exterior wall, the cafe has two massive glass doors that can be opened when it's nice outside. The giant sliding doors look like airplane hangar doors. In a futuristic touch, they open and close quietly through mechanisms hidden underground. Other buildings on the campus include the Steve Jobs Theater, a 165-foot diameter, 20-foot tall circular glass building with no visible supports. Its carbon fiber roof is the largest in the world. Underneath the glass structure is an auditorium that seats 1,000 people. Another building worth checking out is the Apple Park Visitor Center that overlooks the campus. It's divided into four sections, a 10,000 square foot Apple store, a 2,000 square foot cafe, and an observation deck. The fourth area is for an augmented reality experience. Here, you can view a scale model of Apple Park using an iPad. Despite some criticisms about the building's cost and its impact on housing in the area, it's an iconic symbol of Apple's commitment to great design, the environment, and future technology. What do you think about Apple Park? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to Top Luxury. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.